Hey everybody, man, what an amazing day it is just to be alive, just to be in the presence of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I get excited every time we get to gather as Relevant Kingdom Center because I believe that through us, God is doing great things on the earth. And I just want to say, man, today I know that the Lord has something special and significant to say to you. Whether you're in the sanctuary or whether you're watching us online, today God has something, I believe, that is going to penetrate your heart and help to transform your life. You know, this year our theme is The Shift. And we're talking about the fact that we believe that God is shifting things in our favor. We just came out of a series called Night Shift. And we understood that even though we may go through dark days and hard times, that God is able to turn the seasons in our favor. And so today, as we get ready to transition, you know, into another sermon series, not today, but next week, I thought to take this time, this moment, just to encourage you, just to kind of pour into your life. A little bit more because I don't know about you, but this past year, these past few months have been so challenging for so many. But God spoke to me and God's been giving me personal encouragement. God's been giving me personal strength. And I believe that at this moment, I want to pour into you guys everything that God's been pouring on into me. Everything that God's been, God's been speaking to me in these last couple of weeks, months, and even in the last year. And so I want you to stand with me today. Come on, all over the sanctuary if you've got two feet. I want you standing. It is our um, code of ethics. We honor the word of God here at Relevant Kingdom Center. And so we believe it is God breathed. It gives life. And so whenever we read it, we ask that you stand if you are able to. Now, it comes on the screen for those of you that may not have your Bibles. Romans 8 verse 11. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Today, if I could tag a topic to the text, it would be, this can keep me down. I want to say it one more time. This cannot keep me down. As a matter of fact, can you just turn to your neighbor, even though you're social distancing and with your mask on, can you just tell them, say, neighbor, this cannot keep me down. Hallelujah. Pray with me. Father, as we go into your word, I pray that it decrease, you increase. Let the words of my heart, the meditation, Father God of my heart, the words of my mouth, Lord, be acceptable to you. And let it penetrate the hearts of those in this sanctuary and those in our cyber sanctuaries and our online spaces. In Jesus' name, we pray today. And everybody say, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. This can't keep me down. You know, the first thing I want to ask you today is, what is your this? What, what is your this? When I make that statement and when we tag that topic to this text and the moment you heard, this can't keep me down, what is one of the first things that came to your heart and came to your mind? You see, because there is nothing more that the enemy would love to do than to keep you broken and broken down, boxed in. Come on, nothing the enemy would like more than to keep you pressed in and in a depressed, this position and I want to suggest to us today that every one of us listen to me got a this that is trying to keep us down every one of us got a this that we're dealing with a this that we're fighting with and the question I want you to ponder as we spend the next few minutes in this preaching presentation is what is my this is your this a habit that is not spiritually healthy? Is your this a sickness that the doctors cannot figure out and there is no cure for? Is your this a generational thing that something grandma and grandpa, something mommy and daddy, something auntie and uncle dealt with and now you're finding yourself struggling with it or you're finding your children struggling with it? What is your this? What is that thing that has been plaguing your heart and your mind for the last few months, for the last year? What is it that's keeping you from making the kind of progress that it is that you felt that you should have been making? What is it that has been boxing you in? What is it that has been hindering you? And what is it that's been trying to keep you caved in and capped? I'm here to tell you today that I believe that whatever your this is, that God is getting ready to change your state and change your mindset and change your disposition. And whatever your this is, I am making 
making a prophetic declaration even in the beginning of this message. And I want you to know that your this cannot keep you down. Whatever it is you're struggling, I declare that Relevant Kingdom Center is going to be a church where victory is the order of the day. Come on. I declare that victory is going to be our banner. And whenever we walk, people are going to see folks that are walking and living in victory. Come on, everybody say, I'm victorious. Come on, you said it like you didn't believe it. I want you to declare it. Say, everybody declare that I am victorious. <laughs> you know, there was a commercial years ago that was very popular that would show up on cable television that, what, that it got quite popular and it showed an individual, an old lady that had fallen. And the famous words that came out of her mouth that has been repeated throughout the years and throughout generation is this, help, I've fallen and I can't get up. And so many of you here today under the sound of my voice may have fallen under the life, under the circumstances of life. So many of you may have fallen maybe because of things that the enemy brought your way or others may have caused. Some of you may have fallen even by your own mistakes and your own flaws and your own faults. But I'm keen to tell you some good news today and that is you could get back up again. Come on. You could get back up again. If you're sitting next to somebody, can you just encourage them and say neighbor you can get back up again yeah you can get back up again why because in our text we are made aware that we have a helper who is the holy spirit and he is in our lives he is the paracletos he is the helper who was promised to come after jesus would have raised again and after jesus would have gone to sit at the right hand of the father he would send a helper and in our text of romans chapter 8 paul is encouraging the church of room and he's letting them know this fact he says this that if the same spirit who rose christ from the dead watch this dwells in us can i just tell you that is powerful right there because we just came from celebrating resurrection sunday and we understood that they thought the grave would have hold our savior but the grave couldn't hold him come on now somebody and he got up again and if the same spirit that rose christ is the same spirit come on everybody say the same yeah if it's the same spirit that rose christ that watch this dwells in me that dwells in you. Watch what he says. He who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. In other words, here's what Christ is, here's what Paul is saying to the church of Rome. And here is what it's resonating to us today through this preaching text. And that is this, that God is getting ready to raise you up. Come on. God is getting ready to shift some things. That is why our theme this year is shift. Come on. Because we believe that the shift is on. And I came to tell somebody that you've got to stand in the victory wherewith Christ has given you. You've got to stand in the fact that you serve a risen savior and at the and, the and at this point in your life that no matter what you face i strongly believe listen to me as i prepared for you as i prayed for you i believe that you are not going to be living defeated lives but that you are going to live lives of victory i don't care what your circumstances are i don't care what the situation may be that you're faced with today i want you to be reminded of this fact and that is you are more than conquerors through christ that loves you and gave himself for you can i say it again it's coming on the screen just to remind you you were more than conquerors through christ that gave himself for you and loves you you have a champion as a savior come on and because he is your champion can i tell you you are more than a conqueror through christ hallelujah Hallelujah, hallelujah. I feel like jumping through the screen. Come on. And just shaking some of you and telling you, come on, snap out of defeat. Come on, snap out of that depression. Come on, shake out of that stuff because I believe that you've got a champion. You see, the question is not whether or not life, not whether or not life will knock you down or the enemy will knock you down. But the question remains is, will you get back up again? 
I want to ask somebody today that may be de feeling defeated, that may be feeling depressed and overwhelmed and overcome. Listen to me. God had you here for such a time as this. This is no coincidence that you're in this service. This is no coincidence that you came across this stream and that somebody sent you a link to watch this online experience because I believe that here is the question. Are you going to get back up again? Are you going to get back up again? You see, because you may not be responsible for getting knocked down, but you certainly are responsible for getting back up. I don't want you to turn to your neighbor this time, but I want you to speak to yourself, and I want you to call yourself by your name, and I want you to say it like this, because I'm going to say it to myself as well. Dury, come on, you could get back up again. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to call your name. Come on. I want you to say it strong. Say, you can get back up again. You can get back up again. Hallelujah. Because if the same spirit that rose Christ from the dead is the same spirit that dwells in you, you can get back up. Come on. You can get back up. What are you dealing with today? What's overwhelming you today? What you feel like it, it's been overcoming you today? You can get back up. If you're watching us, I want you to type that in the chat. Come on. I want you to type it and just encourage somebody. Say, you can get back up. Come on. I wish I had a beat on that. You can get back up. Come on. I want that song to resonate. You can get back up. Come on, no matter what the enemy brings your way, you can get back up. Hallelujah, you could get back up. So the question is that we're going to tackle in these last few moments that I have is how do I get back up, Pastor Dury, after life and the enemy has given us its hardest blows? How do I get back up? Because that sounds good and it's easy to encourage somebody, but if you're not in my shoe, if you're not facing the things that I'm facing in my house, if, if you don't know, Pastor Dury, what I'm dealing with in my life, come on, how could you just tell me today that I could get back up? Pastor, if you only knew, can I just tell you, if you only knew, if you only knew what God had for you, if you only knew who you were in Christ, hallelujah, it doesn't matter the circumstance. It doesn't matter what life will present. I want you to know that you've got the fortitude, you've got the resilience to get back up again. You've got the resilience to rebound. Come on. You've got the resilience. Come on to resurrect. Hallelujah. Let me say it again. We just celebrated the resurrection of our Savior and in this season and in this week I'm going to celebrate your resurrection because you were resilient. You were more than a conqueror through Christ. Come on because we serve a, a God who's our champion. He has made you a champion. So how do I get back up? You know, I read an interesting tale of a donkey that fell in a well. And the, the, the tale goes like this. One day there was a donkey that fell in a well. And the animal cried piercely. And for hours, the farmer tried to figure out how he would get this donkey out of the well. And so it came to the point where the farmer said, you know what? I just can't retrieve this donkey. And so here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go ahead and, and take him out of his misery. And I'm going to get some folks in the town to come and help me to shovel dirt on top of this well. We're going to close the well up and we're just going to let the donkey rest in peace because there's no way that he's going to get back up. Don't want him to starve. Don't want him to feel all of the pain and the anxiety. So we're just going to take him out of his misery. So he went into the town and got as much people that could and they got shovels and watch what happened. The Bible, <laughs> the story, I'm a preacher, you can tell I talk about the Bible, but this was a tale. The tale tells us that as the villagers began to shovel loads of dirt, onto the donkey and the neighbors were starting to help this farmer shovel loads of dirt onto the donkey the 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 tail the tail says that as the dirt hits the donkey's back at first the donkey was fearful but then all of a sudden the donkey starts to shake 
Donkey starts to shake the dirt off and he starts to stamp the dirt down. Come on now, somebody. And the more they shoveled, the more the donkey shook. And the more the donkey stomped on that dirt. And here's what the farmer recognized. The farmer recognized something interesting. That as they threw dirt into this well that was supposed to be used to bury this donkey, all of a sudden now, they found out that the donkey was able, to their amazement, to come up to the top of the well after loads of dirt was coming on top of that donkey's back. He would shake it off and step up and pretty soon everybody was amazed that the donkey stepped over the air edge of the well and he started to walk off. And I came to tell somebody today point number one on how you could get back up. Shake it off, baby. Come on. I want you to know today that you could shake some stuff off of your life that the enemy has been trying to cover you up with. And when people thought you were buried, they didn't know you were just being planted. And sometimes what was meant to cover us and kill us is only the thing that God will use to fertilize the potential and the power and the purpose that's on the inside of our lives. And so I don't know who I'm talking to today. I don't know who's here today. But I came to tell you, shake it off come on can y'all just repeat that with me say shake it off yeah you could shake off what life has thrown your way here's how you shake it off don't allow failures to get to your heart and don't even allow success to get to your head but live a balanced life understanding that it's not in your strength but it is in the strength and the power of the Lord that you walk and you live come on it is not in your strength it is not in your might but it's in the power and in the might of the Lord I am reminded of the story of Zechariah as the Lord began to give him a vision of Zerubbabel and the prophet Zechariah as he had this vision he he began to ask and question what this vision was in Zechariah chapter 4 and the Bible says this that at this point when Zechariah asked about the vision here is what the Lord said to him he says to him the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel is this, that it's not by might nor by power, but by the spirit says the Lord. What are your mighty, what are you mighty mountain? Come on, he's asking a question. Who are you that stands in the way of Zerubbabel? Who are you that stands in the way of Anne? Who are you that stands in the way of Naaman? Who are you that stands in the way of Anya? Who are you that stands in the way of Jackie? What is it that's standing in your way? What is it that's boxing you in? What is your this? You could shake it off because here is what Zachariah says. He says, who are you? Because here is what's going to happen, mountain. Uh, and before Zerubbabel, you will become level ground. Hallelujah. Glory be. I feel like preaching today. Before the, the mountain before you is about to become a plain. The thing that was blocking you is going to think be the thing that God will use to bless you. The, start, the setback is going to be a setup. Come on. For your come up. I believe that in this moment, God wants you to gather strength, not of your own, but strength that comes by the Spirit of the Lord. And He wants you to begin to shake some stuff off because here's what He said He says, This, He says, God. He says, what are you mighty mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you become level ground. Then He will bring out the capstone to shouts of God bless it. God bless it. That capstone. When we talk about that capstone in this text of, of Zechariah, and I'm telling you, shake some stuff off because guess what? God's going to give you victory over this stuff. Can I just tell you that capstone was important because that capstone represented completion. That capstone was what they would put at the top of a building or top of the wall, and they would decorate it beautifully, and they would use that as a signifying fact that they had completed whatever it is that they had started. And I I believe that in this season of your life that you were getting ready to celebrate completion come on don't miss it in this season of your life you are going to celebrate completion because the good work that God has begun in you is going to be the good work that he completes in you look at your neighbor and say you're going to finish what you started yeah I'm telling you there's an anointing on you to complete hallelujah I know that there's some setbacks but come on God is setting you up there's a shift taking place in your life hallelujah i believe that this is a season you're going to celebrate completion because what good work god is starting in your life is the good work that he will see through in your life Yay. 
Somebody shout, preach, Pastor Dury. I'm doing the best I can up in here. Up in here, God says this is the season you will complete. And you're going to celebrate completion. Whatever's standing before you, shake it off. Number two, and I'm almost out your way. Don't speak defeat. I want to say it again. Number two, do not speak defeat. Don't speak defeat. Here's what I want you to do from this moment on. I want you to start making victorious declarations over your life and over your future. That's why this month, Pastor Carson and I decided that we're going to make declarations in the beginning of the experience. If you come early enough and you see why, how we start off the experiences, we, we've been starting a few weeks with declarations over the house. Because here's the thing, the declaration is going to be coming into manifestation. That's what I believe. I believe that we've got to speak victorious declarations over our family, over our future, over our finances, over our marriages. Come on. We've got to speak victorious declarations that will come. Watch this, y'all, into manifestation. This is not a name it and claim it, a blab it and grab it kind of thing that I'm talking about today. It is simply me saying to you that you've got to stand on God's word. Come on. I want to tell you that you could take God at his word. I know it not may be, not be easy, but you could take God at his word you know jesus exemplified this um this this fact of of being victorious in his declarations because one day they came to him and talked about destroying the temple and jesus said this he said destroy this temple and in three days i will raise it back up again what was he saying he was basically making a declaration that i will not be defeated that you may kill me and you may knock me down and you may even put me in a grave but i want you to know that after three days hallelujah my father Father is going to get me back up again and I don't want you to neglect and, and not understand that there are facts of life I don't want you to feel and live in this you, you, euphoria state where you do not recognize that there are real situations and real things that's happening in your life and you ignore it no what I'm saying is it doesn't matter what the facts are allow the faith that you have in God's word to be in the place where it supersedes your facts do you hear me? Let your faith supersede the facts of life. I'm not telling you to ignore the faith, the facts, but I'm telling you to tell the facts that are mountains that you're getting ready to become plain, plains in the sight of my God. I'm telling you to use your words so that you could understand that I'm not just saying things because I feel like saying them or they make me feel good, but I'm saying what the word says. The word says that I'm healed. Come on. The word says that I'm free. The word says that I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. The word says that I'm not going to be last, but I'm going to be first. Come on. The word says that I will walk through the waters and it won't overcome me. Walk through the fire and not come out smelling like smoke. What does the word say? The word says that I am more than a conqueror through Christ that loved me and gave himself with for me. What does the word say? I know what the fact says, but ask yourself, what does the word say? Because I want you to now start to make declarations that will become manifestations over your life and over your future. And thirdly, and I'm done. I want you to believe and know that God is able, as you declare this word, as you do what the word says, come on, as you shake some stuff off, I want you thirdly to believe and know that God will do what he says he will do. Come on. I want somebody inside here just to give God a praise. If you know he's a God that will do what he says he will do. Come on, online. I dare you to say it and I dare you to type it. Say he will do just what he said he will do. You see, when, when Jesus went to Martha and Lazarus was dead, Jesus told her, he says, your brother will rise again. Martha says, yes, I know he'll rise, um, Jesus. He's going to rise in the last days in the resurrection and Jesus said something to Martha he says she, he says to her he says I am the resurrection and the life anyone watch this y'all who believes in me will live even after dying everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never die do you believe this he asked her the question he said Martha do you believe this I'm getting ready to close, I promise you, but I want to ask you, Relevant, do you believe what the Lord says today? Do you believe this word today? 
Because if you could believe it, I want you to know that God can perform it. Hallelujah. Let me say that one more time. I want to back that one up. If you could believe it, God is able to perform it. Hallelujah. And so belief gives you the power to achieve the impossible. While believing in yourself is important, I'm not just talking about a self-belief. But I'm talking about a belief in the God that you serve. I want you to believe, watch this, that it's not about you, but it's about him. And apart from him, you can do nothing, but with him, you can do all things. Come on now, somebody. In him, you could do all things. And so today, I just came to tell somebody that this can't keep you down. Here's my bottom line. Don't allow what you're supposed to live above keep you down. What is your this today? I tell you, your this is about to become a plane before your eyes. And you're going to have a testimony of the power of the God that you serve. Listen, as we get ready to close, here's what I, here's what I want to do. I want to end today just a, a tad bit differently. And I know, hallelujah, I just feel the presence of the Lord even now. Because somebody was defeated in a, in a defeated place. Somebody felt overwhelmed. Somebody felt like they were being overcome. And every time you think you were getting better, it just got worse. I hear the Lord saying that the shift is on for you today. Come on. The shift is on for you today. And this, whatever your this is, it can't keep you down. But as we end, I want to end just a little bit different. Lee, and I know it may mess up, mess up our stream because of royalties and all of these different things, but there's no copyright intended, so copyright infringement intended, but, but we got to end this way because here's what the Lord told me, that sometimes we come and we hear a lot of talking, but sometimes we just need to be still in his presence and allow the presence of the Lord to just permeate, come on, and speak to us himself, and so as we end... To kind of just seal this word, I want us to listen to this powerful song, Champion. And I want you, as you listen to the words of this song, to begin to allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you, to infuse you with that strength and that power you need. Because when you leave this sanctuary today, when you leave this stream today, you're going to have faith on fire. Come on. You're going to have strength renewed. Come on, you're going to have zeal renewed. God's going to push you and he's going to reawaken the purpose and the passion because you can't stay down. You can't stay down. Listen to me, you can't stay down. There's too much depending on you. You, you can't stay down. There's too much people that are depending on you to waken up to your purpose and your gift. Come on, there's legacy. Your children, parents are depending on you. Come on, your children's children are the, depending on you. You can't stay down. Relevant, we can't stay down. There's an island depending on us there's a city depending on us there's a nation there's a world depending on us so listen to the words of this song and afterwards our campus pastor he's gonna come up he's gonna pray for you and even for those of you that would need specific prayer today i want you to see some of our prayer partners after the service after the experience today and they're gonna pray with you remember this can keep you down listen to the words of this song you are my champion giants fall when you stand undefeated every battle you've won I am who you say I am you crown me with so hard to see it took me so long to believe it that you choose someone like me to carry your victory perfection could never hurt it you give what we don't
defeated with the one who has conquered it all. You're teaching me how to receive it So let all the striving cease Cause this is my victory Come on, sing it again And now I can finally see it You're teaching me how to receive it So let all the striving so this is my victory and you are my champion Jesus giants for when you stand undefeated every battle you want I am who you say I am you cry Saw the Lord seated on his throne and the train of his robe filled the temple and written on the train was every victory he's won for me on his train was written every victory he's won for me Wherever you are, come on.